All right. Good afternoon and welcome to the Writing Effective Resumes Workshop with Career Services. Just to introduce ourselves to you, this is Brooke Rod Satter and I'm Candace House and you're going to see us in Career Services whenever you head upstairs to RTH 218. Um, in case you're not familiar with our office, just to let you know, it is very unique for you to have a Career Services office just for engineering students. So anything from resume critiques to evaluating job offers to on-campus interviews, um, the whole process of recruiting, you're going to want to make sure you see us or come to our office and see how you can get further involved. But today we're just going to focus on, on resumes and we're going to go ahead and, and start with letting you know a little bit more about what is a resume and how you can start working sorry, on this effective document. So today we're going to go over the fundamentals of resume writing, um, the resume checklist that you should always go over before you su submit or send out your resume to any companies, and finally a resume building activity to help you to start creating your own resume. So what is a resume? How many of you already have a resume created? Okay, a good number of you. It's okay if you don't. This is the first step to creating one. A resume is pretty much your marketing tool. It's a brief, concise, and we definitely say concise, summarized list of your skills. Um, oops, they're changing. And it's a method of marketing and advertising all of your valuable skills, and it is a tool that's going to be used to get your foot into the door of an interview or possibly meeting or networking with a company. So a lot of times companies will just see this piece of paper, they won't meet you, they won't get the chance to get to know your personality, know the type of student that you are. They're going uh, are basing their um, judgments on you on this piece of paper, paper known as a resume. So you want to make sure that this document is very strong. So once they meet you, they'll fall in love with you and offer you a position. So this document is your billboard, your selling piece. Okay, so I'm just going to go over a few of the resume sections. Um, and you may not use all of these sections, um, but these are just sections to consider when you're building your resume. Um, so everyone is going to have a header on their resume, and this is your name and contact information. And I'll just briefly go over these. We'll get into more details as, detail as the presenta presentation goes on about what to include. Um, objective and profile is a specific and positive statement uh, specifying the type of opportunity you're seeking and how your skill set is relevant to that position. Um, you want to include your education, um, a list of your education background, your degree, your institution, your expected date of graduation, um, and any relevant coursework. So we'll get more into that later. Also, you want to include work experience. Summarize a list of tasks and projects that you completed in different work experiences and um, focus on leadership and results and achievements. And we'll get to that more with the resume activity at the end on how to build your achievement statements. Um, and then, of course, academic projects. This is a great section. Um, it's a highlighted list of academic project experience that you've done at different institutions that are relevant to the available opportunity that you're applying for. So you have all of these great experiences that you can put on your resume. So that's something to consider, and we'll go into more of that later. Um, skills, this is a list of your technical skills according to skill type, so your programming languages, lab equipment, and also any languages that you are fluent in. So if you're bilingual, trilingual, you want to include that on your resume. Um, and then affiliations and leadership, so any activities you've done on campus or that you're affiliated with, um, you want to include that because that is demonstrating your transferable skills, so skills that you might bring to an opportunity that aren't necessarily engineering specific, but will be a valuable asset. So um, I'm going to go over a few of the sections. The first one is the header. And of course, this is kind of obvious, but it includes your name, address, phone number, and email. This is how employers will contact you. So you want to make sure you put a number on the resume that has a professional sounding voicemail. Um, <laughs> and that you check frequently the voicemail and you also want to include an email that you check frequently so things to consider um, and these are different ways you can format depending on how much room you need um, this one for Tommy Trojan is takes up the most room and then this Jofis, Josephine Bruin why do we have Bruin on there is uh, for someone who has less space okay <laughs> moving on 
Objective and profile. This is what type of job are you seeking and how, rel how are your skills relevant to this position? Um, and there are many different kinds of obje objective statements. Um, and we can certainly help you build one for you, depending on the position. And so here are three examples. The first one is seeking a challenging position in a growth-oriented organization. Obviously, that's very general. It doesn't give anyone much, but that's good if, um, yes, do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, okay, the question was, is, is the presentation going to be available online? And yes, it will be. So um, after the presentation, you'll be able to download. Um, so the first one is very general. Um, the second one is seeking a summer internship in biomedical engineering. This is uh, also very general, but good if you're going to a career fair and you kind of will be talking to different people and want to um, tailor it down a little bit but not be too specific because you don't know who you'll be talking to. Um, and then the last one is highlighted because it's very specific, tailored to a specific position. Seeking a summer internship in technical support to apply my interpersonal skills and two years professional experience in customer service. As you can see, you're kind of showing how your skills relate to the position. So you're bringing in some of your skills. Um, and next we have education. So at this fine university, you definitely want to highlight your education. Um, you will put your degree and university, and you want to start with your most recent institution, uh, which for all of you will be USC. Um, engineering degrees, this is different for engineering students. You want to highlight the engineering degree, not the university. So you want to put that first and bold it, because that's what you're selling. You're selling your engineering degree. Um, you want to include the school, the major, the graduation date. Always include GPA of 3.4 or above, and we'll get more into the GPA question at the end of the presentation. Um, relevant coursework. Uh, this is included if space allows and if it highlights certain skills that are relevant to a position. You don't just kind of want to list coursework just to list coursework. It needs to be specific to that job or there for a reason. Um, and we say avoid listing introductory courses that most, most people will take because um, you want to separate yourself from everyone. And next, here are some examples. Um, this is one example, and also, we have an example resume in your handout if you want to follow along. There are all different kinds of ways to format it. This one, you see the degree is on the top, um, the University of Southern California, expected date of graduation, GPA, um, and then relevant coursework listed underneath. So there are many different ways to do this and many ways to save space doing this too. So. And now I'm going to hand it over to Candace. mic thing is new for us. <laughs> All right, so another section that you're going to have for your resume is your skills section. And skills can be separated into two groups. You're going to have your technical skills, and even if you're a non-computer science major or a non-computer engineering computer science major, you do have technical skills, um, and your language profi proficiency. So on your technical skills, you're going to highlight any of the programming languages that you might know, any software applications that you work with, for example. Um, if you have any uh, experience in Microsoft Project, that is something that a lot of companies are looking for, especially with our graduate students who want to become managers. You're going to look at the project life cycle. So to have experience in that application, you want to highlight. They're looking for engineers who understand the front end of applications. So don't think that software applications you want to leave off, like Excel or Access. Um, lab equipment is very important. If you've had research experience and there's lab equipment that's a standard for your major, you want to make sure that you lift, um, list that, especially if it's going to be used in the position that you're applying for. And finally, for any um, language skills that you have, you want to make sure that you list those as well. If you have multiple languages, that could definitely help you in the international market. Now, academic projects is a section that a lot of students forget to add. And if you do not have a lot of industry experience already, let's say you haven't worked for Boeing yet. It's possible that you haven't done that yet. You're a student. You want to start to highlight these academic projects. Now, the reason why an academic project is important is because it's making that bridge to a company, what you're doing right now as a student and what you could possibly do for them in an internship 
or a co-op, or when you graduate. Now, we call this section academic projects, but this could include any research papers that you've done for a class, any final projects or papers that you've done for a class. So when you finish your first semester here at USC, you will have something to put in your academic project section, because you will have a final exam, a final lab, or a final paper that you're working towards. Um, you want to briefly summarize your classroom experience, and you want to make sure that it could be equated to job skills. So we're going to look at some examples, but you want to consider primarily these transferable skills. Now, we keep talking about transferable skills. What's a transferable skill? It's your chance to take something from the classroom and, again, link it and transfer it to how you can use this to become successful in the workplace. So if you were a leadership, if you had a leadership position for IEEE, um, you're in this organization, maybe you planned events. How will that help you in the work environment? Well, one, you're working in an engineering, a professional engineering organization, and you are using communication skills to be a leader. They assume a lot of times that engineers are not great communicators. They think you're very technical and you work great by yourself. But if you let them know that you collaborate and you work in teams and you can be an effective leader and you have a strong technical background, you want to highlight that. That's a transferable skill. Um, you want to also definitely focus on your role in the project. Any leadership um, roles that you might have had, team leader, team, if you were in a team environment, if you collaborated with others, um, if you presented, if you had to write a technical paper, um, presentations, again, um, you want to make sure you highlight that if you had a final presentation for a class. All of these skills can be transferred. You want to emphasize the process and the end result of your, process, of your project. So when you start making these bullets, you want them to know, okay, what did you do? What was this process? Did you research? Did you analyze? Did you develop? Did you create? And finally, you want them to know what you learned or why did you do this? What was the end result? And if the end result was a presentation on, on your findings, you want to make sure that you list that in your, in your section of academic projects. So here's an example of an academic project. Someone did a cargo plane completion, and this person was a team member. You can see they have the semester that they worked on this project. They designed, built, and tested a prototype aluminum wheels. They helped build carbon fiber fuselage and foam tail glass with fiberglass skin. Not my major, but looks like good stuff, and it will, it will make a lot of sense to someone um, in El Segundo. So you want to make sure that... Right now, you know, they designed, they helped, they built, they tested. You're getting a lot of information from these two bullets. So start to think about what you're doing in the classroom now. One thing that could really help you is last week you guys uh, were bombarded with a lot of syllabi. Take a look at the syllabus for each of your courses and, and try to um, understand what that final project is and how you could start learning and transfer some of the skills you're going to get from particular classes and put that in your resume. And just one other example of an ozone flight sampler. This person collaborated with a team. Um, they optimized properties. You talk about the engine and the rocket um, propulsions that it worked with. So all of this is just, again, giving someone a little bit more insight into what you're doing here at USC. What are you learning as a student? You're actually getting some hands-on experience. You want to make sure that you highlight that. For work experience, Work experience um, can, have, can include your on-campus work experience, any co-op, internship, or full-time positions. A lot of times when people look at and think, start brainstorming about their resume, you're like, oh, well, I haven't worked for a company yet. I've only had that work-study position at the library. There are skills with that work-study position that you could try to transfer into your resume. So you want to make sure some tips to remember with work experience. Keep this in reverse chronological order, meaning starting with the most recent position and working your way downward. You want to include the company, your title with the company, and your start and end date. The resume is bridging um, time periods for companies. So they want to know, what did this person do for the summer? This person worked and was an engineer. Wow, they know how to multitask. So the dates are very important. You want to make sure that you have your bullet points with tasks, responsibilities, and achievements. You want to make sure that you use action verbs and have very specific details as to what you do, what you actually did for the position or what you're currently doing if you're currently um, working. And again, you want to consider those transferable skills. You want to make sure that this piece of paper is giving them insight into you. You have to provide those details for them. So if there's anything that you did at the library or anything that you're doing during your internship or your co-op position that may not be reflected by reading your tasks, that's a problem. You want to make sure that each bullet is giving them insight into what you're doing. So think about those transferable skills. And some examples of work experience. Someone is an office assistant, and they're working in our student affairs office, and they don't think it's too exciting. They wrote down that they did data entry and general office tasks. Seems pretty boring. It's not really helping someone stand out. 
but instead they can say that they updated and maintained the access database of student records. Oh, this person knows how to use a front-end application. They might have done some queries. Okay, they're getting a little bit more hands-on. They scheduled appointments for eight advisors. They know how to multitask. They know how to work with others. They know how to juggle schedules. They respond to phone and in-person inquiries, so they have a customer service background. They know how to think on the fly. I have a lot more insight about this student with the second example versus the first, and they're saying the same exact thing. So start thinking about how you can give them a little bit more insight into what you're th doing um, and start using some of the action verbs that we have on the handout. Activities. What organi organizations and activity, uh, activity, activities utilize your time? Pardon. Um, activities are very important because it does show that you're more than just an engineer and you're more than a student. So I want you to start thinking about some of the activities of professional organizations that are associated with your majors. And if you're not sure about that, if you go to the Viterbi website for current students, there is a list of all the student organizations. We have many organizations for you to join. So start thinking about how you can make your experience here as an engineer more exciting and how you can use these skills later on to get positions. Um, so of course, professional engineering organizations you want to join. Um, campus and community involvement is very important. Um, if you're in the marching band, if you're in a sorority or fraternity, if you're doing any kind of cultural activities, you want to make sure that you list those as well. You want to stress any leadership roles that you have in these organized activities, and you want to make sure that any interests that you list are unique and interesting. The reason why um, we make sure that we say this is a lot of students will put snowboarding. And if you're going to list snowboarding, you need to be prepared to have a 10-minute dialogue or a good story to tell that interviewer about snowboarding. Because if you have snowboarding listed as one of the important things about yourself that you're putting on this marketing document, and they ask you to tell them a little bit more about snowboarding, and you're like, I got a pass last season and I have fun. It's not enough. If you write down that you're a snowboarder, they want to know that you had this awesome experience when you went to Utah for winter break and you went all the way in double diamonds and it was amazing and you did this personal goal of achieving your dreams. You want to make sure that it makes sense, that it's unique, and that it's interesting. So, um, and it's, it's really, it's from my personal experiences, um, years and years and years ago, I was in the marching band here. And it's so funny because my background, I was like, oh, they want to talk to me about SQL and Oracle and programming languages. And they would see Trojan marching band. They're like, did you get to meet the football team? And I'm like, yeah. And then we started talking about that. And then we would get this personal dialogue going. And then they're like, great, all right. Well, you have a great GPA. And we'll, we'll probably see you in the next round. And it was weird because my whole interview would be based on a very personal thing, a random interest that I listed. But that interviewer was a diehard Trojan fan and had questions about that. So you never know, um, especially with sororities and fraternities. You might have someone who... Um, is very active in an organization or in a professional organization that you might have listed and they might take that personal con make a personal connection to you. So you want to start thinking about how you identify outside of being an engineer. So now Brooke's going to talk about this resume checklist. So things you need to do before you submit this or pass this out at the career fair. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so real quick, I'll go over a few of the things to consider when you're doing, before you send out your resume. Um, so we just talked a lot about content, now it's formatting. You wanna have your resume uh, formatted and, and, and there's a couple of rules to follow. Um, first of all, proofread, can't emphasize this enough. Um, you, you don't want any spelling or grammar errors. So if possible, have as many eyes as you can look at your resume before you send it. Um, because that displays, um, you know, that you've been thorough and put some time into your resume. Um, make sure your resume is easy to scan by the human eye and online bots. So you want the format to be easy to read, and there's different tricks that you can use to do that. Um, and then also, Candace will go into more about the scanning a resume. Um, and then also for font size, so there's a few little rules. Um, font size, you want to pick between a 10 and 12 and use a font style that's not that's pretty common, Times New Roman, Arial, no sans scripts, nothing too fancy, because um, you just want it to be easy to read. Um, consistency in formatting. Uh, if you're going to pick a 10 font and use Times New Roman, you want to use it throughout the whole document. You don't want to switch. So that, that's like the consistency. And if you bold one section, you want to bold it everywhere. Um, so you can see on the handout, all the headers are caps and bold. You do it on all of them. 
um, and use the same font size. Um, and also, one-page resume, I don't think we've touched on this yet, but um, employers want just a one page. It's quick, it's easy. Recruiters usually don't look at resumes for very long. They want to see the information pop out. And the way to do that is using your formatting. Um, you've got the content, now you've got to let them read it um, easily and quickly. So ways to, ways to make things stand out, stand out are bolding, caps, underlining, and italics. So don't use too many. I would say stick to two or three. You don't want a lot of fanciness on your resume. Um, and then to help you keep it on one page, you can adjust your margins between a half an inch and an inch. Um, so keep that in mind. And when you actually print your resume, we get this question a lot, use light colored paper. It's kind of, uh, I guess we have on here, positive and professional looking. So something to consider. And then um, above all, avoid templates. Don't use a template on MS Word. Um, it's really hard. When, this is a working document. You're going to be changing your resume as you get more experience. It's hard to go in and reformat it to keep it on one page. And also, and recruiters receive those templates all the time. It shows that you, know, you didn't take the initiative to create your own resume and um, just went in and entered the information where it says to enter it. So I, I definitely strongly suggest avoiding templates. And um, there's more, but Candace is going to cover the rest. <laughs> We'll have two mics next time. Yeah. We don't usually record it. Okay. Big thing on the resume. Do not exaggerate. Be honest. A lot of students think that if they list everything that they worked in, maybe I did C programming for that one project for one week, and you list it. If you don't feel comfortable doing or utilizing any of the skills on your resume for a position, or if you don't feel strong enough to have a conversation with someone about this skill set, do not put it on your resume. Make sure that your resume is an honest example of what you can do for a company. So don't exaggerate and be very honest because everything on that document is fair game for questioning during an interview. You want to make sure that you delete any unnecessary information. So if you find yourself repeating information about yourself or if there's something that um, just isn't relevant to the position, go ahead and get rid of it. Um, watch your tenses and utilize your action verbs, very important. Um, we find a lot of grammatical errors we keep talking about the action verbs, but they're very important, just like transferable skills. Well, watch your tenses. Um, if you did something in the past, make sure it's past tense. If it's present tense, do so. You're going to confuse the interviewer, and you don't want to spend five minutes explaining your resume to someone instead of, instead of having five minutes trying to explain how you can be um, a good contributor to their company. Um, do not use the same examples for academic projects in your work experience. For example, if you have a lot of customer service experience, you might want to highlight something different for the different projects that you've worked on or highlight different skills that you have for your different types of work experience. So you don't want them to look through four different work examples that you were in food service and you list the same task for all four of those positions. You need to diversify. You need this to be different. So you have to start picking your brain on how each position, each academic project, each research experience is highlighting something new about yourself. You have very limited space on one sheet of paper, so you want to make sure that it's selling everything that you have. Um, by the way, proofread, you have to proofread, and, and we bring it up all the time, but we see a lot of resumes. We have resumes forwarded to us from companies where we're just like, yeah, they didn't spell engineering right. Like, you want to make sure that you proofread, 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 and come to us and have a friend take a look at it. Um, a fresh set of eyes is always helpful. So feel free to stop and see us or talk to a friend and work with somebody on your resume. Some of the common resume questions that we get. I have little or no work experience. Well, the one thing that you guys all have in common is that you're students. So if you have little or no work experience, you want to highlight your academic projects and your class papers. If you have no work experience. I've seen a lot of resumes where students do not have work experience, but their projects and their classroom experience is so strong, I completely forget about it. And that's what's going to happen with an employer. They're going to look at all the things you're doing here as a student, and that's what's going to stick out, and that's what you want to do. So you don't want to draw attention to what you do not have or things that you, you don't know. You want to make sure that you highlight what you do have, which is the fact that you're a student and you're getting this wonderful education at USC. If you have a low GPA, don't include it. And if the company is asking that you include your GPA, um, you might want to create a cover letter and explain any circumstances that 
could lend to an explanation as to why you had a low GPA. Maybe you were working 20 hours a week. Uh, maybe you were a commuter and you had just time just wasn't of essence. You don't want it to be an excuse, but you want it to explain if you feel that it's not an accurate representation of who you are as a student. If your GPA is just lower than you know your expectation of yourself is. So you might want to mention that in a cover letter. And your two-page resume. Um, no, don't do a two-page resume. And the reason why is all of the employers, whether they're human resources or an engineering manager, they are pressed for time. And they have stacks and stacks of resumes, and they don't have the time to flip to a second page. And a lot of them just don't even bother. So the first one page, the one page resume, is what we always recommend. Um, one thing you also want to remember when you're creating these resumes is you're creating for three possible audiences. You're creating this for an online bot if you're submitting this online to a company website, and they're probably scanning for keywords that match a job description, so remember that. And by scanning, you want to keep it very succinct. You don't want to write complete sentences, so remember those bots. You also want to remember the busy HR manager who is not an engineer and has resumes from the, for students who are from finance and accounting to international relations students to their engineering students. So again, these people are pressed for time. They're scanning for keywords. They want to know if you're a match for a position. Should they move your pile on to the next person, which would be the engineering manager? And of course, you have the engineering manager, who's the third person who might get your resume. And they're just as busy because they're working on engineering projects and they're possibly hiring you to join their project. So don't waste their time. Make sure that you're listing everything. It's very clean and easy for them to pick out what programming languages do you know? Does this person have any experience in you know, thermodyna thermodynamics? They want to be able to find these quick things and scan and get to it. If they have to look for a long period of time, they're just not going to find it and you're out of luck. So you want to keep remembering that these are busy people who are looking at your document and you want to succinctly summarize what you can do for them. Any questions? A lot of info. Any questions at all? All right. Well, before you guys head out, Brooke has a quick activity for you, which will help you in building your own resume. OK. I'm just going to go over this really quickly. But um, this will help you kind of tailor your resume to the type of opportunity that you're looking for. There's two activities included in the packet. The first one is creating a job analysis checklist. The second one is writing achievement statements to highlight your skills. And then we have an example uh, resume and then the action power verbs. So hopefully this will, you can go home and this will help you create your resume. Um, so the activity one is basically um, finding the job opportunity that you're interested in, a job posting, a job description, and then reading through the job posting and highlighting and underlining your skills and important information that you want to include on your resume that's relevant to that position. So step one, as you see, will it, that's your research part. You want to research the position. What are they looking for? Do you understand the broader context of the job op opportunity? Do you know what products they sell, what services they offer? Um, and then step two, so that'll kind of, you have a checklist on the other side to kind of brainstorm. Step two is analyze what the company is looking for in a candidate. And that's usually posted in their job description, or you might have talked to people at networking events, or you might have a friend that works there that's working on a particular project you're interested in, and they have some insight. So um, that's the second step. And the, the third step is listing any additional criteria. This is where you want to focus on any transferable skills. We keep saying that. But any skills that you've done um, throughout your career at USC or in work experience that transfer and would be relevant to this position, include that. And then step four is narrowing it down and um, figuring out what you want to highlight on your resume. So by the end of that, you should have a pretty good idea of what you need to include on your resume. So, um, so then activity two will help you write your achievement statements. And these are basically your bullet points using your action verbs. They highlight your skills, achievements, they're very results oriented. People want to know results and they want to know what you've learned. So there's a few examples of different um, statements. Um, I like number two, the tutoring, because I see a lot of people who have tutored students. And um, this is a way to make it very results oriented. Tutored three high school students in mathematics, resulting in an average increase of 15% in the students' academic grades. So it took something that might be relatively common and made it sound a lot, uh, well, what it is, that you uh, did show results. And then um, 
So down here we have a couple of areas. The name of position, research, project, or activity that you're targeting or thinking of that you've had experience in and writing down a couple of achievement statements. And then from there, you'll build your bullet points. So um, hopefully this will help you. And if you have any questions or need help with some of your statements or building your resume, we're always available to help. You can just email us for an appointment or come in on our walk-in Wednesdays. We have resume reviews today at 2 o'clock from 2 to 4. So yeah, any questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Yay. We could see ourselves.